If you're like me, you played a lot of Path of Exile in the past. And when you play Last Epoch, you just find yourself wishing, man, I wish there was Herald of Thunder in this game. I wish there was Herald of Ice in this game. I wish I could just pop an entire pack of monsters and get a little bit zoomier than Last Epoch normally allows you to be. If that sounds like you, this build is probably right up your alley. It is so much fun to play. I hope you enjoy this one. Hey YouTube, welcome back. I've got another build here for you. This is a build that I was working on as part of my own build contest. Every once in a while, we've been hosting build contests for new unique items, new set items, new affixes that have been added to the game. And this time around, we did a contest for CDR. So just building as much CDR as you can possibly get and seeing what kinds of cool things you can do that maybe you weren't able to do at all or maybe as efficiently in the past. So I struggled to find something that I wanted to build around, but as it turns out, I'm still in love with Fragment of the Enigma and building spark charges on various characters. So what I wanted to do is use Fragment, apply spark charges, use Mana Strike, those familiar things, stacking intelligence, but I also wanted to build around TP and using Teleport to proc Elinova. So Teleport has a couple good buffs in it, gives us armor, gives us a uh, percent increased elemental damage, but then proccing Elinova is a great way of clearing uh big packs of monsters because spark charge is kind of shotgun so the bigger a pack of monsters the more likely it is that you can just one shot the entire thing and then it also gives us some good defenses so first things first i want to tell you about the uh this cooldown recovery speed portion of this build we'll also talk about some of the broad strokes for offense and defenses and then at the you know middle of the video you can fast forward if you're watching on youtube we'll go over like runes masteries blessings things that are along those lines all right, so the cooldown recovery speed here, we are we're gaining a couple things. First of all, we have Enchant Weapon, and Enchant Weapon has permanent uptime, which is awesome. So instead of it having, you know, 50% increased attack speed sometimes, and then you don't have attack speed other times, we actually have permanent attack speed, which feels great for Enchant Weapon. It also means that the small proc from Enchant Weapon that zaps little monsters as you walk past them, it has a chance of applying Spark Charge too always active so that feels really good to always have the consistent super high attack speed modifier second thing is flame ward we actually only have two uh, stacks of flame ward you could have, you could have three stacks of uh, flame ward if you want but um i think i think your gear requirements for this character are pretty high and we can get away with only having two stacks here so by the time that the second uh flame ward disappears we have another uh flame ward up so we kind of have three stacks of flame ward and then like very small amounts of downtime after that. So having extra cooldown recovery speed, turns out pairing that with one of the best cooldown defensive skills in the game, Flame Ward, quite good. And then we have an unspec snap freeze for the contest that we'll be talking about later. It'll be up on YouTube in a different video. I see that there are a couple people who have like uh, infinite snap freeze, like perma freezing bosses at 2000 corruption. We'll talk about that later, but mine is unspec'd. And even just for having an unspec'd skill, I found this to be pretty useful, just interrupting tier four Jewelra, interrupting a boss, so I can get like a couple seconds of hitting it with um, with no you know counterattacks coming from the boss. Feels really good. So I'm glad that we can have like five skills spec and then like an unspec'd sixth skill as snap freeze here. And then teleport being the big winner here. Teleport, let's pop up in the skill tree for it. We are gaining the 250 flat armor, Flat armor is really hard to get on your gear itself because numerically as a suffix, it rolls pretty small. So having extra armor here pairs really well with things like our Spellblade Mastery, which gives us percent increased armor. So we've got some good armor going on on this character. On top of that, we also have 50% increased elemental damage and some extra haste. Oh, sorry, not the haste, but we have extra cooldown recovery speed here. I forgot this note only works with uh, if you have haste from a different source, which I do not, but other people do. And then we have a 2.4 second cooldown on teleport, which means we can jump around like this, hit some monsters, kite around, and then continue doing this. It means that our map clear is very fast. If there's a big pack of monsters, it's very likely that we can shotgun the entire pack because we'll be applying um, one spark charge off this and then another spark charge off of our offhands. We have two spark charges going on a big pack of enemies. So there's going to be like 10 or 20 shotgunning big explosions going on and it's very likely that they're all going to die so jumping into or even slightly past a big pack of enemies means that this build has crazy good clear speed and acceptable single target the single target damage is not insane but it's quite good 
Um, or I guess it's totally reasonable. It's really not that good, but it's totally reasonable single target damage, um, given how much fun the rest of the build is to play. So that's the cooldown portion of this build. The last time that I played this character, um, I actually played this character like a couple times in the past, doing like some kind of spark charge or static or spell blade, sork. All these builds are pretty similar. Um, but this time around, we went back to playing a sork. Sork gives us tons of cooldown recovery speed because I wanted to play a build that had tons of cooldown recovery speed for the contest. And um, it gives us a better excuse to playing another Fractured Crown build. So just real quick, in case you've never seen a Fractured Crown build, there's a couple important things to know. You don't have to treat it as an Endurance Threshold build, but you can treat it as an Endurance Threshold build. So I think there's two ways to build with Fractured Crown. You can either have Percent Life and Hybrid Life everywhere, and then just... You play, you know, like normal. The gearing requirements for that are not as high as the style of build that I opted into. And you can tell that I actually didn't meet my very high um, gearing requirements because I don't have enough endurance threshold. But we'll talk about that in a second. So you can either like build it with like a normal character, like 2000 life. And then you have like, you know, spell leech because you really need spell leech in that kind of build. Um, and then kind of just having your normal thing going on. I think more importantly is talking about how damage dealt to man before health, we can't call it mind over matter because we're not playing Path of Exile, how it works. So first things first, hold down alt, read the text here. It says a percentage of the damage you take is dealt to mana instead of your health. And the important part, each point of mana shields five health. So it's a five to one ratio of damage that goes over to your mana. So it kind of has damage reduction built into it. What that really means is um, any kind of mana recovery is like juiced up health recovery. And it's very, very strong in terms of having recovery, which is something that Mana Strike helps out with. And then you don't need it to do any more leech than this, but um, I wanted to. So I, I even have extra leech on top of that just to feel super tanky and super cozy because I like when my builds feel super cozy. So you can have Crit Multi instead, but this is what I opted into. Um, on top of that, the reason that Endurance Threshold stacking is acceptable is that damage that goes to your mana is mitigated by Endurance and then gets sent over to your mana at the 5 to 1 ratio, and then you can leech up both pools at the same time, like Mana Regeneration and Mana Strike for the mana pool, and then Health Regeneration and Leech for the red pool here. So the idea would be to have 60% Endurance, which I don't have because I'm a scrub. I only have 50% Endurance here. Uh, and then having that yellow line for your endurance threshold all the way up to the top. So for me, I uh, I didn't hit the gearing requirement because as it turns out, this gear has a huge gearing requirement to it. I'd like to have as much intelligence as possible. I only have 82. I've heard of some people having like 140 and really going ham. Um, but we only have 82, so it's acceptable, but it's fine. So you want intelligence because the fragment gives us two lightning damage for spark charges, but spark charges have the 50% effectiveness of added damage, so it's kind of like one damage, but don't worry about that. And then you also want exalted endurance threshold in as many places as possible. So do you want exalted endurance threshold? Do you want exalted intelligence? Where can you get these modifiers from? I had a lot of trouble getting a good chess piece. Like this one's fine, but it doesn't have an exalted prefix. Eh. So we'll talk about what kind of affixes you should want on your gear, but like my gloves, for example, should have Exalted Endurance Threshold, and my Relic, for example, should also have Exalted Endurance Threshold. If I could clean up those two things, I would have enough Endurance Threshold on this, and then I could start worrying about the other pieces of gear beyond that. So, uh, that's that's kind of like the, the tension of having a very high-end, gear-dependent, Fractured Crown, Endurance Threshold stacking character with as little life as possible. It's really fun to play. It's fun to have offense and defense kind of tied together in this one item. And frankly, I want more items like Fracture Crown in the game. I think the other item that kind of strikes me the same way is the Endurance Stacking Shield. I think it's called Face of the Mountain. Face of the Mountain and Fracture Crown are awesome. I think Last Epoch would do a service to itself by having more exciting items like this that kind of change how you want to be gearing your character all together instead of just, here's the life, here's the spell crit, here's the multi, here's the hybrid life, blah, 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 right? So having things that really change how you want to be gearing your character or what these affixes are in terms of priority, I think it's awesome. I think I think we need more stuff like this in the game. The fact that you get to craft this in a cute way, that's fine. But like the Endurance Shield, this thing, excellent. That's the kind of stuff that I am looking for. So um, before we talk about the skills and the blessings and whatnot, there's one more thing to talk about real quick in terms of CDR. 
and that is um, teleport with a 2.4 second cooldown. You can get this idol here. So this idol, mine has two seconds on it. Ideally, you would have three seconds on it. So your best thing would be like three seconds of stun immunity after using teleport, along with chance to gain lightning ages when you're hit. That would be just like chef's kiss in terms of the idol for you. And that means that as long as you are using your teleport basically on cooldown, which you are because it gives you armor, it gives you buffs, it gives you damage, it gives you movement speed, or I guess it helps you clear the maps faster. You're also stun immune. And being stun immune in Last Epoch is really, really strong, especially when you're playing a endurance threshold stacking character like this. So I think including a bunch of cooldown on this style of character, especially with a Fracture Crown, has been really, really good. It's not like game breaking or anything. It's not the coolest thing you can do with the new CDR affixes, but it stands out as something that's excellent along with this idol here. All right, so let's break down the rest of the skills and we'll talk about what's going on here. This is like the boring part, but we'll talk about it anyways. So in Mana Strike, there's a couple of things to know about. First of all, if you have uh, the teleporting strikes, it says minus mana gained, but this does not apply to critical mana. So make sure that you have one, hopefully two, if you can get plus levels somewhere. You'd like to have two points in, uh, in this note here to get extra mana every time you're slapping something. On top of that, we need three points on the far left side. Let me move my face real quick. We need three points on the far left side to have the mana cost of the mana arc as low as possible. We have a chance to apply a spark charge on hit, and then this... Uh, this 100% chance also applies to the mana arc. So every time that we slap something, we're applying two spark charges with a chance, with a 12% chance, with a 12, uh, with a 37, 40, 50, 60, 70 ish, 70% 70 chance ish of applying a third spark charge every time that we right click an enemy. So that's an important thing for you to know. Uh, the next important thing for you to know about Mana Strike is that the modifiers to crit chance on Mana Strike do not apply to Spark Charges. Spark Charges are very similar to Shadow Daggers in that they do not inherit anything from their parent skill. If Mana Strike had a bunch more multipliers on it, it would not affect the more da or so it would not affect spark charges damage so uh, shadow daggers work the same way there's like a delay in damage there's an ailment relationship that we can talk about if you want to but basically you, you apply spark charge the ailment and then after a duration that ailment procs a skill that is like has this distant relationship to the skill that actually <clears throat> increased and more damage multipliers from the parent skill do not apply to spark charge that's what we're trying to say that's an important thing for you to know about so we only have our five base crit. We don't actually have 21 base crit. So take that, uh, take that of note. Um, beyond that for Mana Strike, let's go to Elinova. So Elinova, there's two variations that you could do with this. You'd be taking all the nodes on the right side for the lightning conversion stuff because you want that spark charge chance. Um, given that we're a spark charge build, you have to decide, like, do you want slightly more base critical strike chance on your Ellie Nova, the spell itself, or do you want a higher chance of getting this extra AOE from the overcharged Ellie Nova? So I opted into putting three points here just to have the Ellie Nova itself crit a little bit more often. But if you wanted even more AOE, which I never found myself wanting, you could take these three, point, three, these three points out and have more AOE on the Ellie Nova so that spark charges apply to more things. So those are your two options for there, but we're just procking this off of TP. We're never self-casting it. After that is teleport. Teleport, we have the three nodes on the far right side for casting our TP, or sorry, for casting our Ellie Nova whenever we TP. We have some extra armor, some travel nodes for some um, some stun avoidance. And I think let's, this is the last point here. You don't need buff duration. You don't need buff duration at all. Um, so what could you do? I guess this last, this 20th point right here is not particularly useful. And like war doesn't do anything. Man efficiency, I guess you can put one point in the man efficiency. It really doesn't matter. So we have 19 points to do something and then one little fluff point over here. I guess two little fluff points because stuff buff duration doesn't really matter because we're also casting this thing on cooldown and they already last four seconds. So there, we got 18 good points. Put your last two points in mana efficiency. Be better than me. Enchant weapon has permanent upslime, so it's quite nice. We have all the mana nodes on the... Uh, on this part over here. You could either numlock this if you'd like to use a numlock trick. For me, I just hold down Q with my pinky and then I never ever take my pinky off. 
So that's how I use Enchant Weapon, because it's permanently up. It gives us a ton of attack speed, and then a couple little procs over here. A little bit of shock chance to make oh, the rest of our lightning damage stronger. And these things, they don't really do much, but they have a little bit of damage on them. And then they also help to apply spark charges every once in a while, so that's fine. Um, and then Flame Ward is kind of boring. Not much to talk about here. We have all of the defensive nodes in Barrier and Prismatic Buffer. We have plus one charge and dual Aegis over here, which is excellent. Three points into duration. And then the rest of our fluff points are over here in 150% increase lightning damage. Like damage, and then we convert to lightning. So there's that. For the mastery, we are prioritizing um, intelligence, crit, crit multi, things along those lines. And we do not want any health at all because we're trying to have low health, very high endurance threshold. So this should look pretty familiar to you. Nothing particularly interesting here. We only have 54 points into the Sork skill tree. You could do uh, maybe, maybe like one or two more points into the Spellblade skill tree if you wanted to. The travel nodes in Spellblade are quite bad. Like we have nine points into Shock on melee lightning attack, which is not particularly good. But um, the points in Arcane Shielding and the Shattered Aegis node, if you're like an actual factual melee build, like Shatter Strike or something, I would only take this in Arena. If you're like not doing arena, then I probably would not take these points. But um, because mana strike is a melee skill that literally can off screen, you can have permanent uptime of all of this um, all of this damage reduction along with the armor here. So the base is uh, 10 damage reduction. With this, it goes to uh, minus 16, four stacks four times. So it's 16 damage reduction instead of 10, but then it also gives you 80% increased armor. So I like this node and I love it on Mana Strike. The rest of these points over here, I like them. They're quite good. Extra attack speed, extra chance to apply Spark Charge on melee hit. In the Sork skill tree, the bottom of the skill tree is not very good for us, but the top of the skill tree is great. So we have these Intelligence nodes, new and 0.9. S tier node, love this node. And it's why we're putting a couple points into Arcane Insight over here. We have some travel nodes, which are not particularly good. We don't really need a big mana pool because we're leeching, or I guess we get mana back on hit very easily. So just a couple points here. We have some travel nodes into Serranomancer for more shock chance, lightning damage, along with some leech. This is, this is the only leech that you need in the build, but I opted into more because I think it feels good. A couple points into chill. I like having one or maybe two points into Arcane Avalanche. I know it says you freeze like nearby enemies, like you nearby frozen enemy one, it's not actually one frozen nearby enemy. It's one AOE floof that freezes enemies. So even just one point of this could freeze a pack of enemies when they're near you. I love having one point of this. I actually kind of like having two points in this, but one is just fine here. I highly recommend this to you. But crit chance, this is doubled for lightning skills. Great. Crit multi, intelligence. Intelligence feeds back into our calculated destruction node here. And then the top of the skill tree is just excellent. It gives cooldown recovery speed and a bunch of flat spell damage for ourselves. So this node here, you might be looking at this saying, why don't we have this? So one spell damage per point is about the same as uh, as intelligence. So it's actually, it's, so it's worse, right? So intelligence gives our spark charges two flat damage. This only gives us one flat damage, but it gives mana regen as well. I think you'd rather just have more intelligence because intelligence also give you crit and... Outside of your spark charges, this node will be better, but we're basically just a spark charge build. So we'd like to have as much intelligence as possible because it's better than the spell slinger node. Cool. For the gear, we talked a little bit about a fractured crown and how this is like an interesting way of building your character at the beginning of this video. I happen to have quite a good fragment of the Enigma, but frankly, finding these with one LP, they drop with one LP all the time. So getting something with spell crit chance will help you cap your crit a little bit easier if you have less than 100 intelligence, like I do. But even just crit multi or something along those lines, you're going to love having something like that. Um, we opted into having lightning penetration on our amulet, which I think is kind of interesting. Remember, shock only stacks up 10 times instead of 20, and shred only stacks up 10 times instead of 20. So the relative value of penetration on your amulet has gone up, especially because you know, like shock and shred are less effective on bosses so i i still don't think that tier five is particularly good but if you can get tier six or even tier seven penetration i, I think it's a worthwhile stat to be having uh to, to include on your build especially if you're not a lightning build because lightning builds kind of get two sources of shred but other builds only really get one source of shred because remember shock 
applies a shred. For your weapon, you are looking for a rune dagger with that four critical strike chance on the implicit, and you'd like a bunch of attack speed. If you get crit multi or lightning damage, that's up to you. You would love to have armor shred. Remember, armor shred applies to all hit damage, not only physical damage. If you hover over armor over here, you'll see that it is only 70% effective, but you definitely still want it, especially on a build like this that stacks it up so so quickly we can get about 100 120 stacks of armor shred very quickly on any old monster it's an excellent thing to have in our build because we hit so many times just by right clicking once um let's look at rings real quick we'd like to have exalted endurance threshold because of the fractured crown you're also looking for intelligence and crit chance or intelligence and lightning damage i found myself with my critical strike chance is currently 82 it's 82, but this gets doubled, so like it's another 80 or 9, it's like 7-ish. So I'm about 90, about like 89 or 90% 90 crit with my uh, 82 intelligence and a couple of critical strike chance rolls around here. So I think critical strike chance is probably just a way to go to have a little bit of extra stuff there. So... Uh, for gloves, again, you're looking for Exalted Endurance Threshold. You want melee attack speed and intelligence. Other things would be like Critical Strike Chances, okay, but really melee attack speed and intelligence is what you're looking for for the prefixes there. Uh, for boots, remember, you want as little health as possible. So intelligence, perfect. Vitality, we do not go hybrid health. So cooldown recovery speed is excellent for us in our boots. Very low opportunity cost of putting cooldown recovery speed here, so I like that a lot. For Relic, uh, I, I think this is just about what you're looking for. I don't think there's really a, uh, an, like, what do you call it? A unique or an LP uh, uh, relic that you're looking for instead. Like, just having, having this base type that has the up to 24 crit multi on it as the implicit is quite good for you. And then it also allows you to seal something if you're looking to do that as well. So again, exalted endurance thresholds is what you're looking for. Intelligent spell crit, crit multi, lightning damage. Those are the kinds of things that could be on the prefixes for you. For our belt, we would like to have cooldown recovery speed and endurance threshold. Um, we ended up having crit avoid here and then capping that with our chest piece, but something along those lines. So I ended up getting crit avoid here and it's a tier seven modifier. So it allowed me to gear up rather easily, but yeah, endurance threshold and, um, and the cooldown recovery speed feel great on this character. For the chest piece, you have lots of options here. If you want to include a bunch of armor, you could do what I did with exalted armor, flat armor. I think at least percent armor is a good thing to be including here. Flat armor rolls very low on all gear. So if you wanted to use your other suffix for some kind of resistance, that'd be a great place to put that as well. But remember, no health. For your prefixes, you have lots of good options. And like, maybe there's a best in slot, but like I have pretty bad RNG recently. So whatever you get, here's the kinds of things you can look out for. Spell crit doubled. That's a pretty good thing. You can even seal a spell crit modifier there. Intelligence, exalted intelligence would be excellent for you. Lightning critical strike multiplier would be excellent. Another, maybe a sealed tier one mana strike levels would be great. Mana strike levels would give you another point into this for giving you even more mana gained on hit, which make you even tankier. Or you can spec it to attack speed as well. Um... And then Flame Ward, you could have Flame Ward. You could have three charges of Flame Ward for even more tankiness and uptime of that tankiness. So there's there's all sorts of prefixes that you could be going for. And if you get any of those, you can work out the rest of that by yourself. So we talked about this huge arcane idol. I think this thing is like the reason for the build almost, like having the stun immunity built in. We have room for another uh, one by three idol here. The prefix is nothing particularly good for us, but having that Lightning Aegis, remember Lightning Aegis is another 25% damage reduction. If you hold on Alt, it doesn't say here, but if you take a look at Lightning Blast and hover over this node, it tells you exactly what it does. Lightning Aegis gives you 50% increased damage and 25% less damage taken. So having that Lightning Aegis as another source of damage reduction is excellent. So we have 11% chance when we are hit. We have room for a couple uh, three by ones. So we're looking for something like this, Lightning Critical Strike Chance, and Spark Charge, you'd like to just have three of those. But uh, Spark Charge on melee hit is a pretty good modifier, so we have those all over the place. Remember, Spark Charge on hit is just like any other bleed on hit or poison on hit, it goes over 100% chance. So we currently have like 270% chance to apply on melee hit, which means we applied two on melee hit with a 70% chance of applying a third on melee hit. So that's pretty neat. The rest of this, poison res, poison res, poison res, poison res, poison res, because I like to have a little bit of poison res. 
for our blessings. Let's take a look at these. I'm going to go to this view because I like using this view for talking about the uh, modifiers or the blessings on the right side here. Lightning builds are awesome because lightning builds get basically plus one blessing. So we have our lightning shred here. We have a little bit of spell leech. This could be crit multi if you want to go a more offensive route. And then we have all resistance. I think all resistance is probably what you want because you have access to a base type that gives you crit avoidance on your chest piece there. And then like most of my builds, I have um, flat armor here. And I would go percent armor, but grabbing up to 150 endurance threshold really helps to get as much endurance threshold on an endurance threshold stacking character as possible. You would need absurd gear in order to not have the endurance threshold from that blessing. So I really recommend that if you end up going the endurance route with a fractured crown. So I think that about does it. We're going to go take a look at all the builds that other people have submitted for the CDR contest. There'll be another video on YouTube if you want to see what other people have come up with for that. Um, this is not like a brand new build, but it's an incredibly fun build to play. I, I don't I don't know how to convey how much fun this is to play. You just teleport on top of things and you're the cool guy walking away from explosion and you never look at it because it's just so cool. I mean, it's like, it's intoxicating to play this character. Uh, we're currently farming like 320, 340 corruption or so. And we're just like, boom, you know, and then enemies blow up behind you. I feel like this is the kind of build where two things are true. First of all, it kind of ruins whatever my next build is going to be because I'm not going to enjoy it as much as this build. And two, and this is a special treat for you people out there who watch the very end of the video. I think this is the perfect build for a Path of Exile player. If you have someone, or maybe you're, maybe you're a Path of Exile player. If you have someone that you're trying to get to play Last Epoch and you're like, oh man, I wish I had Herald of Ice. I wish I had Herald of Thunder. I wish I could blow up an entire pack of enemies. I wish I could see more explosions. This build has big... Path of Exile energy. And if that's the kind of thing that you're looking for, or that your buddy is looking for, tell them about Mana Strike, TP Alley Nova with a Fragmented Enigma. You can play it as a ward-based character. You can do the Fractured Crown thing if you want to. You can play a Spellblade. You can play a Sork. But it's really, really fun. And I recommend it to you. So give it a shot. Let me know how you've been building this character and how your gear has turned out. I, um, I still don't have a Bastion of Honor. So I'm going to go farm a Bastion of Honor because it's been three months now and I still don't have a Bastion of Honor. So just try to be luckier than me and I'll see you next time.